Hello YouTube and welcome back to Java. Today we are going to be talking about methods and what those mean, what they are, what are they good for. So, a method, we've already been working with one method so far, this method. Uh, what is a method? Well, if you come from another language, like say PHP, uh, it'll be called a function. It's basically a block of code that you can call and it executes, generally with some kind of parameters, or none, and uh, it does something useful. So, I already have uh, java.util.wildcard imported. We're going to be making a simple dice game here in order to illustrate methods and to kind of go back over the random and scanner classes and variable storage and as well introduce class variables. So what's a class variable? Well, if I put an integer here, int a equals 4, oops, there we go, int a equals 4, well that doesn't really do much for another method because it's inside this method. If I do another method, public, static, void, uh, roll dice, well, if I do a equals 2 in here, it can't find a. It's saying, well, where's a? What's a? What are you talking about? And it's not there. Now, let me explain the syntax of a um, method real quick. Public means that if you made an object of this class, you'd be able to call it. Static refers to a, a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing right now. We'll go into that. Uh, more tutorials down the road. But basically, um, know that static methods... If it's a static method, you're going to have to be accessing static class variables, and uh, it can affect a couple other things, which we're not going to worry about right now. I uh, don't want to confuse you guys yet with all that. We will get into that as we get more advanced and need those features. Uh, void, so actually, we, let's just take out static for right now. Void mean is what it returns. It, I could have a method that returns an integer. Say you pass it two parameters, uh, int a, int b, it adds them together, divides by two, sends you back the number then I'd put public int instead of public void. Now a equals 2, uh, this isn't going to work at all because it is in a different method. So, we could either pass a to it like this, and whoever we put in these parentheses is passed. It says whenever you call this method you have to pass it one integer, or two integers, or um, and two integers and a string, in that order. And whatever is the first integer will be integer A. The second integer will be integer B. The third, the third item, which is the first string, will be string AB. And so you can call them whatever you want. You could call it like this. Roll dice, four, seven, hello, like that. With a semicolon, of course. Um, or you could use variables. Int um, A equals four. And use A here. However, they don't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be A and A. This could be Q, and it would still work just fine. Now it's going to give us an error here because we don't have A, and roll dice is going to give us an issue because it's static, so we'd have to change this to public void main. Uh, but in general, you these variable names don't have to match up with what you're, with the method you're passing it to calls them. It does the conversion for you. It's fine. You don't have to worry about it. So uh, rolling dice isn't going to accept anything. Um, because all, it's going to be printing out stuff to the screen. It doesn't have to accept any kind of input. Now, let's make some class variables here. So, uh, let's say int money and string username. Let's do that. And in fact, this n should be capitalized. So, in here, it's going to say, let's create our scanner objects, and let's actually make those class objects. Scanner, scan, or let's call it in, that's what we've been doing, equals new scanner system.in. Dot in like that. And then we're going to create a random class, ran a random object, sorry, random random equals new random. Not redundant at all, right? So we have an integer to store our money. We have a string to store the user's name. We have a scanner object to get user input, and we have a random object to randomize to get random numbers uh, in order for rolling a dice. So, sounds pretty good. I think we got this all covered. So, let's start. System.out.println Please enter your username. Alright. And then it will say uh, username equals in dot next line. Like that. Next line that the user enters, that's what username will be set equal to. Then it'll say System.out.println, welcome, plus, we talked about concatenation earlier, same thing here, username like that, and a semicolon. 
So welcome username, and then let's add the exclamation mark. And then let's say on a new line, so now dot println, you have oop, you have plus uh, let's put a dollar sign here, not a percent sign, dollar sign. Uh, plus money. All right, and we never instantiated money to be any value, so in here let's do money equals one thousand. We don't put a dollar sign because that would not uh, any longer be an integer, it would be a string and we're keeping this as an integer to keep it simple. So we just had to put the dollar sign whenever we print it out. So, uh, some dot print line you have and then it tells you how much money you have. Then it says, um, let's say, well let's start calling, calling roll dice now. So roll dice. That's all you need to do and that calls the method. Now, this line basically says, roll dice says, whatever code is between these two braces run that as if it was printed right here, essentially. With a couple uh, small differences, like, you know, the variables passed to it, of course, wouldn't be available to it here, so pass, put those variables and instantiate those above. But basically, roll dice calls this and does all the code in here. So let's do system.out.println. What number would you like to bet on? All right. And let's make an integer bet equals in dot uh, next int. Now, if they enter anything but an integer, it's going to scream at them and say, no, you idiot. <laughs> so, you got to make sure you enter an integer. Uh, and let's clarify it's 1 through 6. So, they can choose any number between 1 and 6, inclusive, to uh, bet on the roll. Now, uh, bet roll. And then we'll create another one integer here. After this, out.println, how much would you like to bet? And here we'll just put a int um, bet money equals in dot next int again. And uh, let's just do a quick if else if in dot next uh, or let's say hmm, well let's do a while bet money is greater than money uh, which it would do after this, in a second, like this while statements, while this is true it just keeps cycling so while that is true system.out.println out you don't have that much money um, you have, and then it will remind them how much they have, plus money and let's put a dollar sign there and let's break this line for readability, plus, oops, there we go. You have plus money, we called it money, yes. And we need um, a period. All right, and that is our println statement. And then, uh, let's see, let's put here, please enter your bet. All right, and they can't enter a decimal. Keep that in mind. And then it would make a bet money equal to in dot next int like that and so they can never bet more than they have we not, we're not going to allow people to go into debt in this game <laughs> so once that's taken care of we will roll the dice so int dice equals um, well, let's just put dice there and then say dice equals and we can do this this is another way to instantiate instantiate then assign later on dice equals random dot next int six. Now that's going to generate between one and five, or zero and five, so we want to add one, so it's one through six now. So we'll say if bet roll is equal to dice, then what do we want to do? We want to tell them, hey, you won. Printlin, you have won. You win plus bet money times six plus exclamation mark, and let's put a dollar sign there. I have to put a semicolon, you win plus bet money times six. So if they bet $10, it's a one in six chance, so they win, they get $60. Not a very normal casino, but certainly uh, logical. Logical winnings, it's uh, break even basically. Then else, uh, system.out.println, you lost. Um, and that's good enough. That we don't have to make them feel too bad. So what do we want to do here? We want to add. Uh, bet roll times six to money. So money plus equals 
bet roll times six. Or an easier way to write that, money equals money plus bet roll times six, using parentheses in order to make it more logical, even though it would follow order of operations just fine without any. So money plus equals bet roll times six. So money equals money plus bet roll times six. If they bet 10, they get 60. 60 plus money, there we go. If they lose, however, money minus equals bet roll. We wouldn't subtract bet roll times 6 because, well, if you bet $10, you're not going to lose 60 when you lose. You're going to lose 10. So we subtract the amount of money they bet. And then if, this is our base case. Now, we're going to do recursion here. We're going to have the method call itself and loop and loop and loop and loop and loop until the person loses. <laughs> Very nice casino, right? So we're going to say if money is less than 0 less than or equal to actually because they couldn't keep playing with zero if money is less than or equal to zero system dot out dot println you are broke whoops you died you're broke and then it would exit else we want to call roll dice again now what do we have here well we have one method and we call that method within it that's called recursion recursion is when you have a method that calls itself now, you can't just have it keep looping like that forever. You have to have some kind of base case here. The base case in this example is if money is less than or equal to zero. Base case is anything that, if those conditions are met, stops the recursion, stops the constant um, replaying of that code by saying, wait, money is less than or equal to zero, let's stop. And so they never really will completely lose. Um, until they, well, they never will completely stop uh, rolling until either they close the program or they lose. So it's it's not a very fair game for sure. And then uh, let's at the top, let's also print out you have how uh, and then the amount of money you have. Println you have dollar sign plus money and semicolon. So let's just run this real quick. See if we have any bugs here. Oop, no, there we go. Uh, Java application does not contain a main type. It's right here. Oh, oh it needs it to be static. Alright, we're going to be making this static too. And all of these static. Static. And static. And finally static. There we go. And we should be all good to go now. Let's run this. Please enter your username. The best Mac tutorials. Like that and you have one thousand dollars we don't need to put this actually because we put it down here what number would you like to bet on uh... let's say five i like the number five i would like to bet ten dollars you lost oh what a bummer now why do i have nine hundred and ninety five i started with a thousand and i bet ten let's run this again and see username whatever what number would you like to bet on five how much would you like to bet one thousand you have won, you win 6,000, you have 1030. Now, let me show you down here. We subtracted bet roll, not bet money. So we need to put bet money here. Sorry about that. All right, let's try this again. The best Mac tutorials. I would like to bet on number five. I would like to bet $25. Oh, I lost. Let's do five again. 25. I lost again. Dang it. Five. 25. I've won. I won 150. And it added that, and I'm now ahead. So let's bet on 6. And let's bet 250. I'm feeling lucky. Oh, I lost. 6, 250. Lost. 6, 250. Lost. 6. I'm trying to run it dry so we can test our base. Oh, dang it, I won. Alright, now screw this. I'm going to bet on 6, and I'm going to bet $1,850. You lost, you are broke, and then it ends. See, terminated there, it means the program ended, it hit this. It did not call itself again, because it hit this base case. So it stopped running and exited basically the loop. We don't need that space there. Although it isn't hurting anyone. So this was how to create methods and how to use class uh, variables. We will be back uh, in our next episode. We will be talking about object instantiation. We'll be creating, we'll be doing the same game, but we'll have a dice object. Uh, and it'll kind of implement the idea of object-oriented programming and make it a little bit more solidified with what we've been doing so far. So thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.